Um, that concludes uh, oral questions. I call on Government Order of the Day number one. A June debate on the second reading of the Appropriation 2018-19 Estimates Bill and the amendment proposed to it. The Honourable Claire Curran. Mr Speaker, between the 26th of February and the 4th of March this year, a thousand New Zealanders were asked in a Victoria University public trust survey if they trusted the government, this government, to do what is right for New Zealand. 65% said yes, which compares with 48% in 2016. Mr Speaker, Madam Speaker, that is a huge increase. It's a huge increase and, um, and it shows that the hallmark of an authentic, purposeful and forward-thinking government is its willingness to confront the hard issues, to front them, to establish the facts, to make decisions, to deal with the issues and to build public confidence and trust. The most recent example of that, Ms. Madam Speaker, was this government's willingness to confront the issue of methamphetamine residue in state housing from smoking it and whether there was evidence of health effects of that. Commissioned by the Minister, Phil Twyford, delivered by the Chief Science Office Advisor, it found no evidence of health effects at all, which was confronting the demonisation of people who live in social housing. And what does this budget do in 2018? It stops the sell-off of state housing. It, is, it will commission the build of 6,400 more state homes, 1,400 more emergency housing places, $143 million for insulation and heating for low-income homeowners which complements the healthy home guarantee and requires rentals to be health, warm and healthy to live in, also complementing the winter energy payment scheme for more than one million Kiwis and their children. Another example of a government willing to confront the hard issues is the government inquiry into mental health, mental health and addiction, confronting the tsunami of mental health issues that has beset our country in recent years. Ms. Madam Speaker, that is not in the budget. But what is in the budget, and while we're waiting to have reported to us on that inquiry in October, is 10.5 million over the next three years to pilot an integrated therapies program for 18 to 25 year olds, 28 million to better support Canterbury children, 17 million to expand school based health services. Though that is the hallmark of a responsible government prepared to tackle the hard issues. Another example, Madam Speaker, is the just transition to a carbon-free economy by 2050. And all of this goes to a plan for the transformation of our economy and public services and how we work together to improve the lives of all New Zealanders. This requires fiscal, social and environmental responsibility. And Budget 2018 is a foundation budget which tackles the big issues in housing, health and in education to set the foundations for the transformations that are needed going forward. And this requires joined up government. It requires a modern, agile and nimble government that sees digital government as being the key to increasing productivity, higher skills, export growth and social inclusion. Um, which is a government that knows that digital transformation will spur innovation and productivity growth. It will transform public services and improve well-being. These things go hand in hand. They go hand in hand with the challenges to jobs and skills. And these are, ex uh, these are critical challenges that face our country. The, the challenges to privacy and security to markets and taxation, to social security systems and public financing. This government, Madam Speaker, will tackle all of those channels, all of those challenges, which is why we are putting in place a foundation budget uh, to set the scene to be able to do that.
We recognise that we can't fix all of the problems that we face with just one budget. We have said that over and over again. We have been honest with the people of New Zealand about this, and they have listened. It's why it's called a foundation budget. It's why we are appointing a chief technology officer. It's why I have appointed uh, a digital economy and digital inclusion advisory group to bring the good ideas and expertise of outside of government it's going well. The, the CTU, CTO appointment process is going well, thank you. It's why I've appointed a digital economy and digital inclusion advisory group to bring those good ideas outside of government closer to government. We are deadly serious about the transformation of our economy and uh, public services. It's why we are appointing advisory groups to bring the good ideas from outside government, closer to government, because this government is deadly serious about its agenda, and it knows that there are good ideas outside government that we need to bring closer to government. We have acknowledged we can't do it all at once. We are being upfront and honest with the public, and they are responding. A good example of this, um, uh, Madam Speaker, it's a small example, but it's quite a stark example, is, in, um, uh, is within MB, the com communications policy advice area. Under the previous government, uh, that part of MB was facing cuts. It was facing cuts of 16 FTEs. That advice that would have been cut was needed for work on the digital economy, improving digital inclusion, and ensuring resilient communications infrastructure. Instead, what this government does, has done under Budget 8 2018 has provided $6.2 million of new operating funding for policy advice on digital economy, digital inclusion, improving com uh, communications infrastructure issues, such as 5G mobile networks and ultra-fast broadband. Madam Speaker, what this government is doing is being honest with the public, showing that we are deadly serious about the transformations required. We're deadly serious about investing in the ideas that are required to do it. What that government was doing was a mirage. It was saying it was doing things and it was cutting them. And it, so therefore, if it was committed to, a, to the digital economy, why was it cutting the, the, the key advice that was required for, uh, to build up that area of the economy, the engine room of our economy? So I'd be keen um, for them to answer that. Um, Madam Speaker, I'd just like to touch on another issue around the, how this government is deadly serious about transformation. It's an area issue that's been heavily neglected by the previous government, and that is funding for public media. That side of the House does not believe in the value of telling our stories, which is why they froze the funding for nearly a decade of public media. Um, rubbish, Mr Bishop, rubbish that the funding was frozen for nearly a decade. Um, the previous government's approach is embarrassing. Internationally, we are ranked as one of the lowest in terms for funding for public media. Thankfully, this government has the vision to start investing properly in public media. It's going to take time to repair a decade of neglect. Um, we don't shy away from that challenge. The $15 million allocated in this budget has been described by the Minister of Finance as a down payment, and I'm excited about what we can do with this funding. The details are being worked through. It won't be long before you find out um, how that money will be distributed and that New Zealanders can see some real demonstration of the changes ahead. This is about ensuring that our stories get told. It means about focus, focusing on what's important to us as New Zealanders around the country, rather than what will bring in the most advertising revenue or what will deliver what has the best clickbait title. This is about who we are as a nation. It's about investing in telling our stories, something that that government froze and took no account of, put no value on for a decade. 
That's the whole point of having a strong public media ecosystem, producing content that is relevant to our national identity, investing in quality investigative journalism, telling stories that would otherwise not be told. That is the hallmark of this government. That's something that we can be proud of. And we won't shy away for de from dealing with the tough issues. I call the Honourable Chris Finlayson. Well, it's a bit rich to be lectured.